Good morning, Sally. How are you? I'm good, Ebony. Good to see you today. Ah, thank you. It's great to see you too. So um, before we kind of get into the thick of everything, I thought it'd be quite nice for you to introduce, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and where you're at at the minute. Sure. So um, my name is Sally Clayton. I'm Chief Risk Officer for Legal and General Home Finance, which is a later life lending business. Um, so I've always worked in financial services. So I've been in financial services for about 27 years now, um, with the last um, 16 or so in the, in the second line. Um, so my background is compliance and conduct. Um, but obviously now I, I have a multi different discipline team that, that cover all of the risk specialisms. I've been with legal in general for almost 10 years now um, and, oh, and that's gone really quickly. <laughs> oh, so, it's, so it's been good? It's gone it's quick? It's been very good, yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing and I was going to say how would you say your career journey's been and would you say there has been any barriers at all to kind of access this level? Yeah, so I, I think, um, I mean, I've been pretty lucky over my career that, that I've had lots of individuals who I would call kind of champions for me and, and supporters. And and I think, you know, a lot of the opportunities that I've, I've found have been because, um, you know, someone has needed somebody to do something, um, not necessarily which fits within the role they're doing. Um, and I'm just one of those people that will put my hands up for things just because, you know, I like to be challenged. I like to do things outside of my own role. And, and I think, you know, when you put your hand up to do something which doesn't necessarily sit on your desk, people appreciate that. And then, and then I guess they, you know, they have you in mind for other things. So the roles that I've had throughout my career are because people have said, oh, I think you could do this. Why don't why don't you give it a go? And, um, you know, as long as I'm interested and I keep challenged, you know, I'm always happy, happy to do things. So I wouldn't say there have been any barriers, but I think that's one of the big thing that people have to do. You have to put yourself out there. You have to be visible and, you know, you have to be willing to do things which, you know, might not necessarily fit within your job description, but can add something to your kit bag. Oh, a hundred percent. I must admit, I always kind of go with the mantra, don't ask, don't get. So, you know, I love that, that the fact that you're so willing to just get involved with everything. And would that be kind of the advice that you'd give to someone wanting to follow a similar career path? Uh, absolutely. And I, and I think the risks particularly can be quite a difficult specialism to get into. You know, I, I, most people don't wake up and think, oh, I want to work in a, in a risk function. Um, so, you know, how are you going to find your way in there? If, that, if that's something that, you know, you find interesting and they, I guess ignites your passion, then how are you going to find your way? And for, and for me, the way that I got into risk was through projects, through showing an interest on projects, getting involved, being the go between between I worked in operations at, at the time between operations and risk. Um, uh, and then what Slowly happened? edging your way into the, that department. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the way I got into risk was they asked um, for me to go over as a second them because they needed some support and they needed someone who really understood the operations to, to, to support a project that they were doing within risk. Um, so I got seconded, I think, back in around 2005 and have never gone back. <laughs> I love that. And in terms of the diversity front, because we've had quite a lot of conversations about how passionate you are there. Have you got involved in anything like mentorship or career changes for other people? Yeah, I have. So so I think I've really benefited through my career by having mentors and, and having very different mentors. So so in the early days, those mentors for me were people from from a risk background. So they could really help build my technical knowledge and, and help me understand risk. But more latterly now, my mentors sit in other specialisms as, as I took, go back to, you know, adding to my kit bag. I'm I'm a risk, risk specialist now. I've worked in risk a long time. I don't need someone to mentor me on risk, but I need someone to mentor me on other things, you know leadership and, and and other specialisms so having a mentor I think is a, is a really important thing and um, last year I took part in, in a program which the, the legal and general group run um, around providing mentor for um, young people young and, and, and underprivileged people um, being mentored by people in business and I got to mentor a young individual and I, I can honestly say I got as much out of it as they did um, because at the time, I didn't have a mentor. My mentor had left the business. 
at the, at the end of 2019, um, I hadn't gotten around to finding a new one because obviously the pandemic kit was pretty busy doing yeah. BSU. Um, but it Everyone's reminded working me, from home. <laughs> but exactly, and it, it just reminded me that um, it, actually how valuable a mentor is. And it, I, I thought, no, I need to go and have a look for a new mentor. So, so that's what I did. So the individual got a lot out of it, but I think you can get a lot out of it as well. You know. It, it, you learn through being um, the mentor so as well as the mentee so uh, and that individual finished the program and um, they they went into a completely they'd been doing an apprenticeship where unfortunately they'd been made redundant due to it was in the hospitality area so ah, um, and that, but they really wanted to get into data um, and that individual went off and has secured um, an apprenticeship in data and I I'd put them in touch with lots of contacts around the business and the sorts of things they need to think about. And I think, it, as I say, it's just so rewarding. Oh, that's so amazing. And, you know, to give up your time, but as well, like how you feel. Yes, I gave this time, but look what I got back. Yeah. Um, it's really, really inspiring. Would you say, you know, were there any other benefits to doing this apart from obviously feeling really good and kind of, you know, being able to help a fellow professional wanting to take that career path so I think it's just how you can be an advocate more generally so obviously as I say you know it's benefited me individually um, around what I could get out of this but you know I spoke to lots of other people and said you know I think you'd be really good at this if you ever thought about doing some mentoring and I and I think a lot of people discount themselves and think oh you know that no that's something for senior people but of course you need yeah. mentors for all area levels of the business as people move up so again I think it's just being a bit of a cheerleader and, and reminding people that you know okay it's it's not a big chunk out of your week you know it might be um it might be half an hour a month an hour a month or whatever it might be but you know you're going to get benefit out of that and so will the individual absolutely couldn't agree with you more and do you know what I think it's actually one of the most interesting things the fact that you're there saying well I, I am at a senior level I am an exec but I still have a mentor and that yeah. there's still areas that you feel that you can continuously develop in absolutely. oh absolutely yeah and we, we can you know every day we're learning we can always learn um and um, th th there's always more to do. So I think, you know, ne never we're never at the end of our journey. Um, so it's important to keep remembering that and prioritising, you know, time for yourself, because I think that's something we do all deprioritise. So it's important to take that time, step back and just have a bit of thinking time. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time today, actually. And, you know, agreeing to speak with me about this, because I think it's so important and I'd love to hearing about your journey. Yeah. Great. Good to speak to you, Ebony.